time based on their relative uh, power. So basically, since the 1970s, or really the 80s, um, government unions have been very strongly opposed to constitutional conventions. But in the late um, 19th century, early 20th century, when they were weak, they were great advocates for the process. Basically, at the time, it was business, big business, uh, especially the trust, the railroads, and um, the, the groups that had tremendous control of our legislatures um, were opposed, and the more populist groups um, favored them. And much of what um, people fear losing from a constitutional convention came in the New Deal Convention of 1938. That's when labor got its pension and other rights. It was a great champion of the institution. Now that they are, have been very successful with the legislature, they prefer that mechanism and they mistrust uh, this mechanism. So the politics have evolved. Unfortunately, it has evolved in a, in a very unfavorable way. I've, I have an essay on how the politics have evolved since 1777 to the present. I mean, in our facts of Loomis's day, you had 50% turnover in the legislature. Farmers were by far the most common type of legislature. Um, they were not career politicians. They didn't make their money uh, from, uh, they didn't look, as this is the career. Legislatures have always been opposed to conventions, but the, the level of, of opposition when you have a professional legislature is much greater. And early on, you know, you had maybe uh, big business uh, that had a lot at stake with it opposed, and now you have the legislatures, you have the, uh, big business and big labor. It's sort of like <coughs> impossible politically, this institution in the last, you know, few decades when you have that type of very sophisticated um, opposition. So that's a, a big change. Um, a, a critical element um, in the politics is the no campaigns focus on the second part of the process, the delegate selection. I don't want to talk about the third part, the popular ratification. So that's just in the framing. We're going to talk a lot of it about the potential corruption and the second part. The third part is sort of awkward because both legislative and initiated amendments and constitutionally initiated amendments have to be ratified. So if you attack that part of the process, you're really attacking um, all types of constitutional amendments. So um, I would argue that the, the, critic, the most critical part of the process is the third part, because that if, if a constitutional convention is just able to propose things, and you have the right to you know, reject them. And to me, that is the, the most critical step in the process, that final one. But you, if you look at how it's debated publicly, you don't even know that that third step exists because there's so much focus on the second step. So, and then uh, the last point I'd like to make is that um, the, the no campaigns tend to say that um, a, the constitutional convention mechanism is a substitute, not a complement, meaning you can substitute legislative initiative amendment for constitutional convention, and obviously this was, you know, these are but Importantly, different types of institutions, they're complements. And you can't say that, oh, uh, we have this other system that's more efficient um, uh, to, 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 that can solve the same type of problems that a constitutional convention was designed. So those are four critical political differences. And I'd like to close with, uh, uh, we got a quote earlier from Winston Churchill. This is a different Winston Churchill. And uh, Winston Churchill said, that democracy was the worst form of government except all the other forms that have been tried from time to time. And I think that sort of um, encapsulates my view of the state um, constitutional um, convention. Um, it's the only mechanism we have in New York to bypass the legislature in proposing amendment. It isn't a perfect system like democracy isn't, but you know, it's the only one we have and if you're throwing it out, you're throwing out you know, the baby with the bathwater. Uh, the, the goal, if there are problems with the institution, and I think New York has one of the better constitutional convention um, systems, partly because it leaves less discretion to the legislature, um, we ought to fix any problems at the next constitutional convention. 
Um, but it's a, it's a vitally <coughs> important institution. And like all forms of democracy, it's got some warts. Um, but um, uh, uh, it, it's an institution that we should really cherish as something extraordinarily valuable. Um, so that's, um, that's it. And just on my particular interest is that I am interested in defending the, in this institution, which gets bad about a lot in you know, the day-to-day -day politics, I'm less focused on the things that you're probably most concerned about, which is what exactly is a constitution we going to do or, or, or not do. I'm interested in, in why we have this institution and why it's incredibly valuable. We don't want to badmouth this institution. We might argue that it's not the appropriate time or something like that. But where my line is, is these attacks, it's like attacking democracy. A lot of people do it. You go to Russia, you go to uh, uh, Iran and whatnot. There are plenty of reasons that sounds sort of reasonable to attack democracy, uh, but I, I don't think we should be attacking this institution as an institution. So that, that's where I'm going from. And hopefully Jim will give you some more practical uh, views. Uh, so.